what I'm about to embark on over the next few days as of seven o'clock tonight, something I've never done before. A 36 hour fast followed by another 36 hour fast. Whilst fasting is nothing new to me, back in 2014 I did alternate day fasting, eating normally for one and then 500 calories for the next for six weeks solid because I needed to get myself down from 114 kilos because I was dangerously overweight. And since then, I've been a big fan of intermittent fasting, 16-8 as it's sometimes known, mainly because I can never find a breakfast that I actually like. Now this is something I discovered courtesy of the brilliantly named Dr. Mindy Peltz. Her claims are pretty staggering in regard to the amount of weight you can lose. And if you watch this video, you'll know that my interest doesn't lie in how much weight I lose, it's what the weight is that I lose. Is it water and muscle, which I really don't want to lose, or is it that dangerous visceral fat around my middle, which I really do. So this is a two-part experiment, really. The first one being what I'm going to do this week, which is two 36-hour fasts separated by 12-hour eating window, as per her protocol. And all being well, if that goes well, I'm going to do it in the future, but with a DEXA scan before and then immediately afterwards to see exactly what that weight is that I've lost. And I don't intend to stop exercising whilst I won't be doing any crazy high intensive VO2 max or zone five work during my fasted state. I will be doing some weights and some good zone two stuff in the meantime. Now I've got about seven hours until I start this fast, so I better get eating. How are you feeling right now? Right now, um, the most obvious thing is a lack of energy. I'm feeling quite lethargic, and this the, co the food is constantly on my mind. Um, but I think I'm going to be all right. It's not. Um, it's not going to be impossible, but it's just kind of more the distraction side of things that's annoying at the minute, and just feeling so lacking in energy. And how long have you been fasting for? So far, it's eight minutes and thirty-four seconds. I've been fasting for a sum total of 12 hours so far. Pretty much just been asleep, so nothing major going on, but it is important to keep busy and have something to do in the time that you are fasting. Dr. Mindy Peltz is very, very enthusiastic about fasting in general, particularly fasting for 36 hours. This idea of 36 hours fast, 12 hour eating window and a 36 hour fast again and you can carry this on ad infinitum. She makes some pretty bold claims, some of which I'll put up on the screen. And of course, there are concerns about fasting. Dr. Peter Atia, for example, used to intermittent fast a lot, but has tended to steer clear of that idea more recently because of his concerns about getting enough protein intake, which I totally understand. It's really important that I get the protein in to build the muscle. However, I'm not gonna to get to that point of being old enough to need the muscle if I don't get rid of this visceral fat. And even Peter Atia says that in certain circumstances, a good, long, prolonged fast is actually the right thing to do, which is what I'm doing. And whilst it is a water fast, I am allowed black coffee. Keeping busy is a good idea. But perhaps shopping is not the best idea. 22 hours. When you bear in mind that even when I'm not fasting, I pretty much constantly think about food, it's hardly a big surprise to discover that I can't stop thinking about food. And what doesn't help is that I've decided to make videos about the process. And of course, I'm constantly now thinking about making videos about the fact that I'm not eating food. Definitely the longest I think I've ever been without food, at least knowingly. And then soon it'll be 24 hours. And I think that's gonna be the trickiest bit between 7 p.m., which will be 24 hours, and going to bed. We always have dinner together if we're in the house. And I'm not gonna change that tonight, so it's gonna be an interesting experience sitting there whilst they're eating their dinner. And I'm drinking water. Is that nice? Yes. Can I have some? No. Is that nice? Yes. Can I have some? No. Is that nice? Yeah. <laughs> Can I have some? <laughs> beautiful people. Now I didn't have the world's greatest sleep last night actually. Yeah sorry I just had to quickly double check. Yeah I've lost 1.6 kilos 
of something. And I guess that is the most important thing that I need to find out the next time around that I do this. I'm pretty sure it's not water. I've been drinking plenty of water, so much so that I was actually getting up every sort of two or three hours to have a wee last night. And um, my urine was clear, clear as clear as clear all day yesterday. So, because it was the only thing that I could consume apart from a couple of black coffees in the morning, did drink plenty of water. So I'm pretty sure it's not all water, which kind of means it's either muscle, protein, uh, or fat, or something else. And I guess when I do this the next time round, that's what we're going to discover by doing a DEXA scan before and after these double 36 hour fasts. So the other thing that should be happening at this point is something called autophagy, which is where the body clears out and replaces damaged cells. Now that's a really, really good thing. There is a lot of research that suggests it helps with Alzheimer's, it helps with type two diabetes, it helps with cancers and all the other things that we're trying to avoid, including cerebral and cardiovascular issues. So alongside losing this visceral fat, obviously that is another great thing to trigger. But it's hard to monitor whether I'm actually in that position, but it seems to start around about 17 to 24 hours after fasting. Well, obviously I'm at 36 now, uh, the optimum time being about a 48 hour fast. So that's where we're at. I've lost a bit of weight, but what's the weight? And and also I should be in a state of autophagy at this point here and also my blood work looks good and I bizarrely feel good my cognition's not awesome I'm not like super snappy at the minute just had to look up numbers of my weight that I literally looked at a couple of minutes ago I'm not super sharp mentally and I think that's something that research says happens after a really prolonged fast You're looking at two three four days when that super sharpness kicks in the hunter kind of acuteness and the the, the, the hearing becomes super sharp and everything else so I don't think that's going to occur now where we at now well actually I'm going to push it a little bit further today I'm not super hungry I'm going to take the dogs out I'm going to do a weight session then when I finish that weight session uh, I'm going to have myself a nice protein packed meal to break my fast before I start my working day so yes I have eaten and it was good. So I'm now in my eating window. I'm not gonna do loads of video on this because I'm just gonna be eating and doing normal stuff. I will list, however, what I'm gonna eat during this window in the description, just purely out of interest because I kinda need to repeat this experiment in the future. Some things to note. One, I pushed my fast to around about 41 hours. I definitely could have carried on for longer, but that's not what the experiment is. I need to kind of keep this strictly something that I can repeat. But as hungry as I was at the end of last night, in the morning, hunger went away again, definitely could have carried on. The other thing is, I feel great. My skin feels good. I'm very aware of everything that's going on around me. What I'm not though is sharp. I feel a bit sluggish in terms of my thought processes, but I can hear and see and smell far more acutely right now. So just before I broke my fast, I did weigh myself and this is where I was at and this is the loss. The other thing is I did my blood sugar just before breaking my fast and it had shot up to six plus. So I did it again and again and again. I thought I had some dodgy strips. So I did a bit of reading on this and it turns out the weight session I did, obviously, if you think about it, had probably generated something called glycogenesis, which is where the lactic acid that I'm generating from my muscle uh, exercise was turned back into sugar. And also adrenaline can cause the release of glycogen, sh blood sugars from your liver and your muscles where it's stored. We have about 2000 calories stored in our liver and, and our muscles uh, and that can get released and that's why my blood sugar um, spiked just before I had the fast it was because I did the weights interesting stuff so I'm just heading into the end of my eating window got a couple of hours left I thought I'd come out just do a quick I don't know 50 minute run or something like that nice and easy the last video I put out seems to do quite well it seems there's an awful lot of you out there that are interested in the same things I am which means really this channel belongs to all of us. It would appear an awful lot of you that watch these videos aren't subscribed. It only takes two seconds. You can do it whilst you're watching the video. But the most important thing you can do is to leave a comment and give me a thumbs up. The YouTube algorithm means that has a huge impact on how well a video does and how well a channel does. This next time round on fasting that I do with the DEXA scan is going to cost a few quid. I'm desperately trying to get this channel monetized. It doesn't cost you anything to do this. Just give me a thumbs up, give me a comment below. Let me know what you think about fasting and all that will help fund these little experiments that I can pass on to you because I love you. No. Eating window complete, time to fast.
Welcome to a very crisp, cold Bristol. Start of the second fast from 7 p.m. last night. It's now 20 past one or something. I don't think the first, you know, 12 hours or so of a fast are really a problem. For me, it's from now until I go to bed that's really the, the real drag. But I'm looking forward to tomorrow morning, um, not because I can eat, because I'm probably gonna push it to around 40 hours again, but mainly more so because I quite had like a nice euphoric, mindful sense about me yesterday, which was a cool vibe. I don't know what to tell you really. Uh, I haven't eaten any food so far. Um, that's what fasting is, I don't know what to show you, but um, my, my weight this morning, interestingly enough, was exactly the same as it was at the end of the fast. So obviously I ate for seven or eight hours yesterday, and then when I woke up this morning, I was still at the same weight as I was at the end of the fast, and my blood sugars are good. They're 5.1 this morning. I'm just about to do another blood sugar test now, just to see where I'm at. Be interesting to see if it's dropped below five. <laughs> Well, hello there. I've just got back from Kettlebells. Now, I nearly didn't go to Kettlebells because before I left go, it was just around about the 24 hour fasting mark, I did my blood sugar, and it read this, which is extraordinarily low actually. It's kind of borderline with a point where you might have to do something about it and actually have some food. I thought, well, hang on a minute. No, this is an experiment, isn't it? Do you remember during the last fast when I did some weights just before I broke my fast and my blood sugar shot up to 6.2? I thought, I wonder if the same will happen doing kettlebells tonight. And it did. Look, when I got back, I did my blood sugar and it had gone to 5.5 millimoles. For me, I don't know about you, I'm genuinely finding that stuff interesting. As we said before, this is the body putting sugar into your system because you're actually exercising. Very cool. This thing, you know what? It's worth looking after, isn't it? Anyway, look, there's very little point in filming very much more today because I'm about to head downstairs after having a shower to go and watch my family eat pizza. I mean, pizza? When I'm fasting, that is not fair. Then I'm gonna to head to bed, and actually this is definitely out of all the fasting bits. The last bit before going to bed is the worst bit for me. So the next time I see you will be tomorrow morning, and we'll see if I can tap into that awesome, mindful, euphoric state. See you in the morning. No night. -night. Good morning, you beauties. How did you sleep? I didn't sleep particularly well. My Garmin told me I had a fair sleep, but actually I woke up relatively early and couldn't get back to sleep. I put that more down to the cold, not being able to breathe very well, rather than the fast per se, but who really knows? I do actually usually sleep fairly well. But this morning when I woke up, my bloods had reduced again from my post kettlebell um, spike. They'd gone back down to 3.2, which is, is it 3.2? This is the thing, you see, I have this mindfulness. I'm really in the moment and I'm noticing things, but I can't remember anything. I literally can't remember. I'm, I'm gonna have to tell you what my bloods and my, my weight were when I get inside in a minute, but I weighed myself and did bloods first thing this morning to see where I got to. We'll look at those in a minute. And at this point, I've actually fasted for around 38 and a half hours. So I've gone well over the 36 hours that's uh, suggested. I'm about to do a relatively short weight session, did kettlebells last night, and then have something to eat. Dr. Mindy Pelt's suggestion for breaking your fast after the 36 hours um, is to do some weights and uh, to do some exercise and then to have a high protein meal, about 30 grams of protein, which is about a full tub, 300 gram tub of, uh, of cottage cheese. So I've made the salad, uh, I'm gonna do some weights and eat that food and have a shower. And then as far as I'm concerned, I'm kind of done with this whole thing. It's minus two in here, so it's gonna be a cold one and I'm gonna hit the weights and then I'm gonna hit the fork. Okay, so we are done. Thanks for following this video all the way to the end. And first of all, I need to talk about what my weight in my blood was, because I just could not remember what it was. So when I started this, I started off at 95.1 kilos, and then when I weighed myself at the end of the second fast, I was 92, still got to check, I was 92.5 kilos. So that's a loss of 2.6 kilos in total. Now of what? Well, I'll come on to that. The second thing is the blood sugar. Now that had some really interesting stuff going on there. It dropped as I'd imagined it had, but obviously the exercise thing was a definitely a fascinating element of this I wasn't expecting. And in terms of this, well actually, the experiment was to find out whether I could do it, first of all, without spending out a load of money on the DEXA scan and finding out I couldn't fast. Well, I could I actually find it relatively easy. The worst bit being that 24 hour point to when I go to bed, that's a definite struggle for me but I think it would be for most people. But it is in essence easy. And often people talk about this mental acuity, it's real sharpness I get, and I absolutely did not get that. What I had was a much more mindful state, almost a vaguely familiar euphoria, euphoric kind of sense of well-being, relaxation, and kind of just being in the moment. And all my senses were pretty sharp. It's just that my brain was kind of slow. 
So would I suggest doing it? Well, that's where it becomes tricky. I can't really fully get behind this until we know what that weight is. And that's where experiment two comes in. As I've said previously several times, the plan next time is to do exactly the same protocol, do exactly the same type of fasting, same hours that I did this time. I kept pretty good records of everything. What I will be adding in the mix, of course, is a DEXA scan just before I start fasting and a DEXA scan at the end of it so that I know exactly what that weight loss is. The other thing I wanna add into the mix is using ketone strips that go in my glucose monitor so I can measure my ketosis state. So when I get into that state of ketosis, I think that would be a really good addition to this experiment. This is pretty interesting stuff, isn't it? The likes of you and I, we're not experts in this. We also don't really have an agenda. You've got James Smith on one side of the equation, absolutely slamming into fasting and on the other end of the, the scale you've got Dr Mindy Peltz who basically thinks it's the answer to all of our problems and the truth probably is somewhere as usual in the middle. This thing is you have watched this video it does mean that you are like me and you're interested in trying to find out about these things while well, I'm here to experiment for you. So if you're not subscribed to the channel you know what to do just hit subscribe what would really help as I've said previously in this if you were to give it a thumbs up and also leave a comment but also maybe share this with some people that might be interested in it. The channel just say look hey there's a channel here a guy who's just like us looking into the same things we're interested in but you know how it is until I make the next video and you watch it look after yourselves and make sure you look after those around you